I'm in Somerville and I'm going to continue my videos on real-time systems by talking about architectural patterns, ways in which the architectures of real-time systems may be organised. What we see when we look at software systems in general is that each type of system tends to have one of a, a number of architectural patterns and this is true for real-time systems. We see that these real-time systems have follow a particular architectural style or pattern. And in this video, I'm going to talk about three of these patterns, which I've called observe and react, environmental control, and process pipeline. We see the observe and react pattern when the system is monitoring a set of sensors and it reacts to some exceptional event in these sensors. The environmental control pattern comes in control systems where the system monitors its environment and continually changes the state of actuators so that the, the system responds to changes in the system's environment. And the process pipeline pattern is used in data acquisition systems when we're collecting data from the environment, but that data has to be transformed. The, the representation of that data has to be changed in some way. The observe and react pattern monitors a set of sensors in the system's environment, and it may display the results of that monitoring on some operator console. It continually examines the values of these sensors. If there's some unusual value, it raises an alert so that the operators of the system are aware of that unusual value and the system may respond in some way. It may initiate some actuators that, for example, sets off an alarm. As I said, the architectures of real-time systems are process architectures. That is, these systems are made up of a number of concurrent processes. So I'll be talking about the architectural styles in terms of the processes involved. And in this diagram we see the process architecture for the observe and react pattern. The observer process, which can in practice be a set of processes, a number of different processes, uh, is the process that observes the environment. It monitors or it collects data from the sensors in the environment. This data is passed to the analysis process, which checks if the environment appears to be in its normal state. If so, it doesn't take any action and continues to monitor the sensors. If, for some reason, the collected data indicates an unusual or exceptional state, the analysis process will usually set off an alarm and it will initiate a reactor processes, process or processes. These are connected to actuators in the system, which then take action to hopefully bring the system back into its normal state. And in general, there are display processes which show the operators of the system what's going on. This diagram is the architecture, the process architecture, for a burglar alarm system, and that follows the observe and react pattern. The analysis process, I've called here the system controller. The observer process are the sensors connected to the burglar alarm system. And in this example, I've got door sensors, movement sensors, window sensors, and also a voltage monitoring process which checks for power failure. The alarm process actually sets off the audible burglar alarm, but there are other reactor processes associated with this system. The system is designed for use in an office building so that if a potential burglar is detected, the lights are switched on in that part of the building. An alert is sent to an external control centre, perhaps the police. And there are display processes which show the state of the system so that uh, an operator, a remote operator, can monitor what's going on. The observe and react pattern is used in situations where 
reactions, if you like, are unusual. Mostly the system is just monitoring. But many real-time systems are real-time control systems. That is, they continually change the state of the system in response to signals from the system's environment. And I've called in architectures of this type environmental control architectures. Environmental control architectures collect information from a set of sensors, they check the state of actuators in the system, they carry out some analysis based on the data collected from the sensors and actuators, and then they send control signals to the actuators to change the state of the system so that the actuators are continually changing in response to signals from the system sensors. Again, there may be a display process which shows an operator or a user what's going on. This diagram shows the process architecture for the environmental control pattern. As you can see, there's a monitoring process. Again, there may be multiple monitoring processes involved. And these collect data from the system sensors. These are passed to the control process, which also takes data from the actuators connected to the system, so it's aware of the state of these actuators. If necessary, the control process sends signals to the actuator control to ensure that the state of the actuators is changed in response to the signals from the environment. And the display process as I've said, shows operators or users what's going on. An anti-lock or anti-skid braking system in a car is an example of a situation where an environmental control architecture is used. There are sensors attached to each of the wheels in the car and they can detect whether or not the wheel is skidding or slipping if the wheel is not turning and the car's in movement is deemed to be sliding rather than turning and that means there's a loss of control for the driver. The control process monitors the state of the brake pedal in the car so that if the, <coughs> the user is braking hard which is not something you should be doing if your car is slipping it, will, it may actually reduce the braking pressure that's being applied and it also communicates with the actuator process which can control individual brakes on each wheel and the way in which anti-skid braking works is that it continually turns the brake on and off on and off each in each wheel which gives the wheel the wheel a chance to to turn as a, instead of sliding i haven't shown any display process because if you've been in a car with anti-skid braking this happens so quickly that display processes are not very meaningful, although in practice you can usually get some feedback through the brake pedal. But it would be certainly possible to have a display process which illuminated a light on the dashboard to show that anti-skid was in operation. Many real-time systems have to monitor events that happen very quickly and it isn't actually possible to process the data and take actions in real time. So that if there are events happening, say, in a chemical or nuclear reactor, these are happening astonishingly quickly. So we need to simply grab as much data as possible, as quickly as possible. And then that data is transformed into a, a, a representation that can actually be processed and used. So the process pipeline architectural style has three processes or process types. It has a producer process, which is the process that grabs the data from the sensors. It has a buffer process so that we store the data momentarily until that can be collected. And it has a consumer process that takes the data from the buffer and then processes that in some way. We use the buffer to manage any timing differences between the producer and the consumer processes. And in situations such as nuclear reactions, where things happen incredibly quickly, it's usually the case that the producer process is running much faster than the consumer process, so we need a large buffer to collect that information. So here's an example of the process pipeline, which is monitoring the neutron flux in a, a nuclear reactor. 
The neutron flux in a reactor is a measure of how quickly the reaction is processing and we control that by using uh, control rods that increase or slow down the neutron flux in the system. The sensors in the system are analog sensors so the producer process is an A to D converter that collects these to digital signals and these are passed through to a raw data buffer. There's then another processing step which analyzes that raw data and puts it into another buffer which I've called here the flux value buffer and this changes the representation of the raw data that has been collected and it's then further processed to be stored for later, later analysis. So we use this type of architecture in situations where we have to collect data very quickly. What we find in many systems is that the architecture is actually a hybrid architecture where more than one of these patterns is used. So if we were using a, an observe and react pattern, it may be the case that if the data from the sensors is coming very quickly, we would have a process pipeline pattern in front of that to collect the data and it's then analysed and signals sent to react to that data. In summary then, perhaps the majority of real-time systems fit into one of these three stereotypical architectural patterns. Observe and react, environmental control and process pipeline. And these are a good place to start when we're thinking about and designing the architecture for real-time systems.